would probably say it was uh, Minimaru from Fire Force. Uh, I was a huge um, Soul Eater fan, um, and when they... Uh, I grew up in a very religious household and didn't have a lot of exposure to anime growing up. Um, my dad's a Southern Baptist preacher, um, and I don't know if it was because of the witchcraft, the guys, <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to watch it. Um, so whenever I got the opportunity to audition up at uh, what was then Funimation forever ago, um, I was like, man, I don't know this world, and I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I had a very limited experience um, with like, you know, Studio Ghibli films and things like that that were pretty mainstream. Um, but I watched a couple different shows for research. Uh, one of those was Fairy Tale. Uh, one of those was High School of the Dead, which those are two shows on very different ends of the spectrum. Oh my god. Um, and then I also watched uh, Soul Eater. Um, and I was just so uh, impressed with the, the darkness of it, with the character design, um, with, uh, with the animation um, and the performances. And so when Fire Force was announced, I did the naughty, uh, and I directly contacted the director um, to message them about it, which you should never do. That's something you should never do as an actor. Um, anyway, but I, uh, yeah, uh, I identify with him a great deal. Uh, Vinimaru has a, a very healthy disrespect for authority. Um, and uh, he doesn't play well with others, and he's very capable. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, oh, this is basically me. We're all in Fire Force together, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. I'm the villain in that one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Somebody asked me before the panel how many shows you guys have done together, and I said, they have over a thousand voice acting credits, like, combined. I'm sure there's more than a few. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if there's a show that has more than 20 characters, we're probably all in it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, next question is from... Next question from Alana. This is for Caitlin again. What was your favorite character that you voiced? She says hers was Haruhi. Yeah, Haruhi. That's what I answered a second ago. Yeah. There you go. Answer that twice. There you go. Uh, this question is for everyone. What was your favorite episode to voice? Uh, or your favorite line? Mm -hmm. From Hero? From My Hero? This we'll go that. with that. It's my hero panel. It, it kind of all runs together for me. Uh, because a lot of my stuff with my hero was recorded during the pandemic. Before the pandemic, uh, it was very short bursts that I would record. Then in the pandemic, my stuff really hit for that character, so I had to record a lot. But I'd be sitting in my office at home, which is now my studio, recording episode after episode at, as efficiently and as swiftly as we could also managing my household at the same time and pseudo-engineering my session. And so my focus was so split that nothing stuck. And we were doing Fruits Basket at the same time. And, and Fruits Basket. And, and your really heavy stuff, season and, yeah. two stuff. Oof. How did you do that, Eric? I'm amazing. <laughs> you are. You, I, you are amazing. No, no. No wonder when, when Yuki had to cry, you really were crying because life was hard at the time. Oh, I was drunk. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> what was that, 11 in the morning? It's five you know, o'clock somewhere. It's just about focus, you know. It's just about focus. You, if, you, if you can figure, as an actor, if you can figure out how to focus on your singular character, you'll be fine. There you go. Aaron, how about you? Um, I think we all know that Conway Woods doesn't say very much. Um, he's going to get his day in the sun in season six. Uh, this new uh, OVA that came out, the uh, Hero League Baseball, I think I have more lines in that OVA than I have in all five seasons combined. Yay! Uh, up until this point. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, man, I think with the, the, new, the recent movie that came out, I think I have three lines, and I'm in 11 scenes. It was incredible. Uh, but in terms of uh, favorite lines, um, I'd probably say um, assault, robbery, and the legal use of powers during rush hour traffic. You are the incarnation of evil. <laughs> yes. Round of applause. My favorite episode with Mina is the episode when all of the kids move into the dorm at UA, yeah. and she wants to see everybody's rooms. Uh, she wants to see like how they all decorate so she can secretly or not so secretly judge them and determine whose room is the best. And uh, I think that that's really fun. 
for a lot of reasons. It's fun for the audience to get to see each character's personality and how they decorate their spaces. But it's just, she's a little, like, social activities director for the crew. And uh, I think that it's a really fun episode uh, to work on. I love it. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you wish you had your character's quirk? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to, I'd like, cause I think Conway Woods is probably the closest I'll ever get to playing Spider-Man. Um, and I'd love to web-sling. I lucid dream a lot. Um, and for the longest time, whenever I would lucid dream, I would choose to fly. Um, and then I think after the first Spider-Man movie came out with Tobey Maguire, I was, in my lucid dreams, web-slinging all over the place. Uh, and it's just oh, it bizarre. Like, I, can feel, I can feel the tension of the web pulling on the skin of my wrist in my dreams. I love that. That made me uncomfortable. <laughs> me too. Well, unless you go by the rules of uh, Multiverse of Madness, your lucid dreaming is actually one of your variants with actual Spider-Man powers swinging around the city. That is, that's, yeah. I oftentimes refer to Conway Woods as Spider Groot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's an episode of What If, I think. <laughs> Kid, how about you? Any I, situations? I don't know what on earth I would use acid powers for. <laughs> Not at all. I, I, I mean, I couldn't. I would just kill people. <laughs> or dogs. Oh. I don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 Our That'd powers, be a terrible our powers only power. work in my hero world. <laughs> We've seen some very unique uh, quirks on the show. Uh, I remember, I think it was a reporter that had the quirk of pulling out cameras of, out of his skin and like various bodies. What's one original or unique quirk you wish you had in real life? Uh, I've stolen this from Ian Sinclair, but I would love the ability to put the USB into the thing the right way on the first time every time. <laughs> Don't we all? Yes, I love that. Mine would be the ability to manifest any meal I've ever had. Ooh. Okay, to have it again. Like, that was the yeah. best steak. Just steak food. from J Prime all the time. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, not all the time. There are some other things I need, too. <laughs> uh, I would like... Uh, <laughs> I would like the court to, uh, to make uh, voting day a national holiday um, so that everyone can vote. <laughs> it's going to be to make your son go to sleep whenever he needs him to. <laughs> no, he's a good sleeper. It's great. Aww. That'll change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll change this answer to that question maybe in about a year. <laughs> uh, uh. I'm always curious, uh, everybody has a great story about how they sort of fell into voice acting. It's not always just something they thought they'd be doing uh, as a career, but uh, do, I would love to hear how each of you sort of got to voice acting. Was it from acting and then you sort of had a friend that asked you to do a favor or did you walk to a studio one day? What's your voice acting origin story? All right, because he's <laughs> sitting here. Um, I was a theater student in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and a friend of mine is now like the head of the sound and engineering department at Crunchyroll, but back then at Funimation, he'd worked there six months or something, and he's like, Caitlin, you like anime, do you want a tour of the studio? I said, yeah. So I went on this tour, and he took me into one of the rooms, this man right here, uh, was directing at the time, but there were no actors in there. Uh -huh. And so he was just making small talk, and when I mentioned that I was a theater student, he had me get into the booth. I thought this was part of the tour, you guys. It seemed normal. Like, let's show this actor, this person, what inside the booth is. Put these headphones on, you're going to hear this thing, and when read this line on the page, I'm like, okay. So I did the line a couple of times, and then when I came out, Eric said, that was great, I give your number to Tara down the hall and you can work here. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, I, I remember I kept asking him if he wanted my headshot and resume, because I was a good actor, I had brought those things, just in case. So. And he's like, no, no, we really don't need that, we just need your phone number, uh, nice to meet you. And I'm like, okay. Um, and that was, I even remember like the days of the week, that was a Thursday, and I came back on Sunday. And I was recording with Christopher Sabat as my director on the first episode of Case Closed. And uh, the rest is history. That's incredible. Thank yeah. you so much, Eric. Yeah, thanks, Eric. You're welcome.
<laughs> I was delivering pizzas in Denton, Texas, and acting and trying to pay my bills. And at about one o'clock in the morning, uh, an actress who I worked with, who was working with Funimation at the time, showed up at the pizza place and was like, oh my gosh, Eric, I haven't seen you in a while. We were in college theater together. And she's like, hey, I'm doing the voices at this voiceover place. Here's the phone number. You should probably get an audition. You'd do well. And I was like, all right. So I called, I got an audition. I brought my headshot and resume too, because I'm a good actor. I went in, I auditioned once. They didn't have anything for me, they didn't cast me. Then a few weeks later I got the call to come in specifically to audition for Trunks because they were having difficulty casting it and I walked in and auditioned once or twice and that was my first booking. That's wild. Amazing. Um, that's crazy. Uh, I am theater trash. Uh, people <laughs> have been uh, paying me to act in some way or another uh, for 20 years and I think uh, I don't know, at some point, maybe 2012, uh, I was in this show called The Farnsworth Invention uh, at a theater up in North Texas. Um, and one of the, somebody who directed up at uh, Funimation at the time, Joel McDonald, uh, who now uh, directs over at Gearbox and uh, directs uh, games like Borderlands 3 and uh, Tiny Team is Wonderlands and all that stuff. Uh, he was in the show with me and I was playing four different characters, uh, speaking Russian and doing a bunch of things uh, and we got to the end of the show, and he said, hey, man, you've got really great vocal control. Would you like to uh, come up and audition for this thing? And I said, hell yes, please. I'll take two. Um, and then uh, I went up and auditioned for this show called Level E. Uh, which is kind oh, of my a, gosh. I've been that. Okay. It, it's kind of the poor man's version of Men in Black. Um, but there's, you know, uh, yeah, Men in Black suits, aliens living here on Earth, and that sort of thing. And I... Got a tiny bit part as a detective. Um, it was like whatever unnamed, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was my first, and that's that's the point at which I was like, oh, I really need to go back and like figure out what I'm doing because I'm not exactly sure. And then watched all those shows, and then my very next audition uh, was for a show called uh, Torco Gourmet Hunter, um, and I auditioned for Tyler Walker. Also brought my like an idiot headshot resume. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. Uh, but I, I auditioned for uh, Torco Gourmet Hunter and got my first named role as uh, Sunny. Beautiful, beautiful, long haired Sunny. And I love it. I love it. You guys have been doing voice acting for many years. You've seen sort of how the pandemic has affected everything. How do you describe how the pandemic has uh, sort of transformed the industry now? Transformed the industry? Yeah. Uh, ruined. Ruined the industry wow. for everyone. It, uh, it, it transformation is is one thing, but we all have to do everything. It, it requires almost everyone to do four times the amount of work that they were doing before, from wow. directors to writers, actors, everybody. And I don't know why, considering now we're going back to it. I think it's because there's a lot of people that will called producers and casting directors who realized, wait, we can pass all this work down to the actors? And that's yeah. where it sits. So we're auditioning from home, and not just for anime, but we're auditioning from home. If we're auditioning on camera, we're auditioning at home, on camera, and sending everything in. Where you don't get feedback, you don't get immediate feedback from people so that you know if you're doing good or, or bad, or what you can improve on. You know, so it's still feels very confusing to me. Yeah. I appreciate Eric's being candid about that. I think a lot of uh, people would say, oh, it's wonderful. It's opened so many doors. Um, honestly, it's opened a lot of doors for competition. Uh, now people can be from anywhere, it would seem, and I'm, I'm used to just competing with folks within my market where I feel like, okay, I know these voices, I know my chances, I know how hard I have to work to get this part that I want. But now it's not just me. Now it's like, if you can record from home, you can essentially record from anywhere. So that is difficult. But as Eric mentioned, uh, yes, yeah, so when we were trying to do, when we were doing anime dubbing from home, there was so much more work involved in every aspect. Because I'm also a voice director. 
So you suddenly had to become an IT professional and know how to utilize multiple computers doing various things, running like five programs when you used to only run one, and it was your engineer who was running it, and you just got to sit here and listen. And it became so hard. And when everything is done, all of these files, they get passed off to somebody else to make the show sound good, and they have to make uh, 14 different people's sound equipment sound nice, like they're all in the same place. They're definitely not. Yes, exactly. So there's been a lot of, um, I don't know, what, I don't know, rumblings. People have said that we are now going back to working in the studio, but I'm so grateful. Yes. I'm so grateful. It means that we can focus on quality and focus on the performance and what makes dubs good. Absolutely. Um, what has raised them to this level that people even care about them at all. So. Yeah. Aaron? Anything uh, good to say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, I would uh, echo all of that uh, completely. I, I definitely need... Um, I... It's funny, because we're, everything, we're definitely, everything's done from home, and we, uh, we did submit a lot of auditions from home prior to the pandemic, um, but it used to be that for commercial auditions and for, uh, like, uh, uh, I do quite a bit of hand modeling, Eric, uh, but uh, I mean, do you really? Yeah, now I'm like looking at your hands. I'm like, yeah, they're, they're gorgeous. Those are magnificent. Uh, my wife loves them. It's a, my, her favorite part of it. Uh, <laughs> wow. wow. But that's not tough. Oh, God, no. But she just thinks that oh, this is a, a big Sunday morning panel. Uh, God, I hope my wife is watching. Uh, but anyway, but Hi, uh, Nikki. In, in terms of uh, in terms of like on camera stuff, I book so much more. Um, on camera stuff, recording and, and self directing at home. Really? really? Yes, because I know what the people want. Um, but as far as voice stuff, I have no idea. I don't know what they want. Um, and I remember specifically like uh, going into audition for uh, Oscar Lost in Space, which is a great show that Caitlin directed. Oh. Um, and I looked at the sides and I'm like, oh, I don't necessarily sound like a 13 year old child. Uh, or whatever, um, and I can pitch my voice up, and I know that I can live there for you know to have like a dynamic range in that in that space. Uh, but there was a particular character that I read for that I I read for, and then I, I forget the note. The note was something about him being him having a deeper voice in relation to. And this is the redirect that Caitlin gave me in the audition: is that this character uh, Zach Walker had a deeper uh, voice than the other teenage crew. Uh, of this spaceship, and I never would have, I never would have made the adjustment in like reading the sides at home that she had me make for the audition. So I, I, I would definitely, I much prefer going in studio and having in person or like or working auditions to figure something out, as opposed to trying to figure out what, you know, what in relate like what dynamic range for a particular character means in relation to the scope of this entire uh, show that you're auditioning for, but. It sounds like if each of, each one of you loves the collaboration aspect of voice acting and recording um, from the director. Um, you probably all prefer to record in the same room with other voice actors. Oh, but we can't with dubbing. Done? We don't do that with dubbing because okay. we're so focused on uh, the animation, which cannot be changed. Right. So from the director's perspective, and all of us direct or have directed, uh, that's where we're listening to the actor's performance and how that performance fits into the animation. And I can really only do that one character at a time. Gotcha. So, yeah. uh, we still have a little bit of time left. If you would like to ask a live question to our panelists, we have a microphone right here. Also, by the way, this card system is the most efficient question oh, asking so system nice. I've ever experienced at a con. These people know what they're doing. Yeah. Hi, what's your name and uh, what's your question? Hi, I'm Tori, and my question is... Step up really close to the microphone for us. Okay, so uh, a lot of the My Hero characters um, are clearly like heavily influenced by Marvel and DC Comics. So my question is, which Western comic book team do you think that your character would be a good fit for? <laughs> I'll just say like what my favorite is. I think Mina is so wild and bizarre and crazy. I, I want to hang out with the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're my favorite. I know nothing about what you're asking. I'm ashamed. <laughs> I'm not a comic book person. 
Uh, my fandom lies elsewhere. And so I don't know comic books very well, and I don't know the comic book movies very well. Um, I, I tend to like garbage horror stuff. So you want to ask me about Stephen King? I would know. Yeah, why well, Stephen King story? Which oh, he was probably he would, he would be he would be uh, uh, the the vampire in Salem's Lot. I like that. Not the lead vampire. Not the lead vampire. He's assistant. The one who works the town. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. And they're remaking Salem's Lot right now. And they're turning it in, they're remaking it and setting it in 1974 when the book was set. I'm really excited about it. You see, you get me talking about that. Like, I'm, I'm a comic book idiot. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. No, I apologize. We're living in different worlds. Uh, I would say because Cowboy Woods is so uh, regimented and buttoned up, uh, I, I would definitely probably put him with the Avengers. Um, since they're pretty, that's a military operation. You'll probably land in there for sure. I love it. Thank you for your question. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is John, and uh, this relates to what you're talking about, uh, the dubbing. Uh, decades ago, William Shatner was trapped in a men's room in order to record his lines for the animated Star Trek. And his comments later on in the video interviews was, that's where it belonged in, in the restroom. He, uh, he felt it was that bad. How do you relate to that? <laughs> I think every actor has had that experience with one project or another. Um, you know, not necessarily voiceover, not necessarily anime, but we've all found ourselves at one point. Made, like, for me, it's like backstage going, do I really, really have to go back out there on that stage and say those lines one more time in this garbage show, in this garbage theater? You know, we've all been there. Do you find when you uh, when you are in that the, the show that you're not super psyched about yeah. on the final the final performance like on that Sunday matinee like as you're saying words you're just like and then like they're just flying out of your brain like you're just yeah. injecting lines yeah I, I have done that I have done that before I had I have a great little anecdote about that I on the second to last performance of the stage version of Clue. That was a disaster. The director was a disaster. The butler, before before the end of Act One, he cut to the end scene of the play and gave away. And, oh, it was uh, this character, and this is how they did it. All right, let's go. And just was over that show. Oh my God! Wow! And then they had to go to intermission and come back and still do Act Two. Wow. That's incredible. Um, I uh, th There was a time, I had an experience where I was recording a character in a show, uh, and I did not, um, all of the initial uh, lines were off camera, and I, I said, did all the lines, and the character, uh, I'm not going to say, give too many details, but I recorded these off camera lines, and, and set the voice for this thing, and then the character appeared, uh, on camera, and I thought, oh my god, this voice does not match this character at all. And I was not in a position that day with that director and that show to question their judgment. And so... Or when, lack thereof. Yes. And when I saw that it didn't match, I could I was trying, my brain started to try to manipulate the words that I was reading, like... To like make it fit the face and the body of this person that I saw. I was like, I can't. Even, I could barely read. Uh, it was so. And, I was, and then, uh, then we went got all the lines, and I realized I it was like, I am so glad that that is like town, townsperson 105C, and no one will ever know that I did this. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's so frustrating. Yeah. What's your question? What was your high school experience like? What was our high school experience like? That's cool how it relates to my hero, because you mentioned that at the, at the beginning. Yeah. Mm. Mine was fine. Uh, I did all of the nerdy, artsy kid things. I was in marching band for two years. I was in show choir for three years and drama for all four. So I did all of the things. Um, I. 
But I found that that made me like well known because you know everybody has to go see the plays for their English class, um, or they have to go to the concert for some credit for some other class. So I knew everybody, but didn't exactly know where I fit. And a lot of my friends were upperclassmen. So by my senior year, my really close friends had graduated. They were all older than me, um, and I found myself spending a lot of my lunches in classroom with my English teacher talking about Shakespeare. That's the kind of nerd that I was. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. It served me well, because I, of all the theater that I still do, Shakespeare is what I do the most frequently. So I was, you know, sowing some seeds at the time. Um, yeah. I, um, I am currently friends with only one person I went to high school with. And I knew him well before high school. Um, so, actually, I'm friends with nobody I went to high school with, for good reason. Um, I was treated very poorly by my group of friends. I was kicked out of the theater department for things I didn't do. Um, I had a job I was fired from. Uh, I had another job I was fired from. Um, I had, uh, I was bullied, I was beaten up, I, you know, anything that you can say about high school that sucked, I, 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 did, I went through that. So, uh, I, I did not like it. It was not fun. And, uh, yeah. How about you, Aaron? Uh, I had a pretty great high school experience. <laughs> you um, so I went to the, uh, I went to this school called Stanton College Preparatory School, which is a, a magnet school uh, in downtown Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, that uh, continues to place normally like in the top five in U.S. News and World Report rankings. Uh, it's an international baccalaureate school, and at the time when we were in an international baccalaureate school, I think there were only like seven in the country. Um, it was very difficult. Like they, uh, everyone there was focused on academics. Um, I didn't. Uh, anyone. I uh, I was a pacifist for a very long time. And middle school was terrible. Middle school was absolutely the worst. Uh, and I got bullied and bullied and bullied because uh, I had red hair and uh, I also loved the Lord. Um, that's a terrible combination. Hey, no one bullies me for those things. And, um, and so I, <laughs> there was a day in, in my in eighth grade when I, uh, this bully came up and pulled, I was just trying to be a fat kid playing cards with my friends at the, the lunch table. And this kid came up behind me and pulled my ears. And for whatever reason, this switch flipped my brain. And like, I knew I was larger. I didn't know how much larger I was than everyone else. But uh, I the flip switched and I berserked and beat the hell out of that kid in the middle of the lunchroom. Uh, and like punched him so hard that he flew over a table uh, and landed on the ground. And like, I at some point in the scuffle lost a shoe. Wow. Uh, and like, I walked off and realized that I didn't have a shoe. And then, like, in some weird, badass 80, 80s movie scene, I just walked up with eye contact and like picked up my shoe and walked off. Um, and no one, uh, no one messed with me after that, uh, that day from, from that point on. I hosted the, uh, we had closed circuit television in my high school, and I hosted the morning announcements every morning. Oh, I did that. Uh, yeah, I did it was that. It's pretty great. Uh, yeah, I did oh, that. no, I did that in middle school. A bunch of theater. I wish I had kissed more people. Uh, I didn't realize I had a very intense fear of putting my mouth on other people's mouths. Uh, I don't it's like know the why. pandemic. And so when I played Nathan Detroit in Guys and Dolls, uh, that hey, kiss with Adelaide hey, was hey, strange. Hey, right? hey. Uh, that, uh, yeah. Anyway. Note to self, do not touch Aaron's ears. Um, don't touch We have time for one more audience question. Detroit. Okay. So, um, what was your favorite thing on the set from My Hero? Like, what was your favorite thing just in general? I don't know, like hanging out with everyone, or what was like a core star memory? I just currently have lyrics from Guys and Dolls running through my head. Like that's all I can think of. Um, so, as mentioned before, we record individually. So there isn't a set the same way there is a movie set. And also, uh, across the years, because I think we started My Hero in 2017, maybe? 2018? It has been recorded in many different booths at two different buildings. One was Funimation, and our newest building is now Crunchyroll. So it's not exactly like a... I remember the day when I walked on, and there was Justin Briner and Clifford Chapin. Um, I think... 
the more memorable experiences are these, actually. Uh, it's coming to conventions, and there have been some bigger shows that have managed to get you know, like 12 or 15 cast members all together. Uh, and that's really fun and cool, mostly because, as I mentioned, I just walked into Funimation one day, and this guy heard me say a sentence and gave me a job. And over the years, I've been very blessed to be in some pretty big properties. It was Full Metal Alchemist, and then it was Oron, and then it was One Piece, and then it was Attack on Titan. And every time there's a new big show, I'm like, is this, is this really happening still? I can't believe this. And uh, I think that my hero fandom is the biggest of them all, and uh, the kind was all-encompassing. So my most memorable my hero experiences are with you guys. Yeah, thank you for your question. Yeah. I, uh, I promised we would talk a little bit about it. I apologize, but we're already out of time. Um, season five was incredible. It felt like we are building towards something very big and possibly very bad. Uh, in like 10 words or less, how would you describe what we expect to see in season six? Which, according to today, is going to be released on October 1st. All Out War. Ooh, I love it. I have no frame of reference. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't read the manga. Eight words. There you go. <laughs> you It'll be good, noise. though. Yeah, it'll be that much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. If you have any other questions, uh, come by our table. Uh, go right up there. Come see us. Come see them. Out of your room. Okay.